Hi there, and welcome to another Draw With Me, and hopefully today you will in fact draw with me, or watch me draw, and then hopefully be inspired to do some drawing later on, uh, or just sit and listen while you eat your lunch, or you know, who knows what. Whoops. Hi there. So, um, this is the second time this week that I've drawn with you, and uh, it's really fun. I hope that you're enjoying it too. Today we're going to do what I've called in the description of this still life. And when I first saw it just now on the on this YouTube page, for a split second I thought that it meant that I was still live, as if I'd been still live since Tuesday. But in fact, I haven't. I've stopped. I've continued to be alive, but I have uh, gone off the air so that I don't seem like some sort of virtual Jerry Lewis at an endless telethon of drawing. So, um, I'm glad that a bunch of you seem to have shown up to, to, to draw with me today. Um, Diana says that she is hearing the theme from Jeopardy in her head as she waits for the countdown. I understand that. I had that feeling too. I was sort of scurrying around, um, sort of thinking that I'd forgotten something and come to to uh, join you today, so there was a sense of impending doom that was coming my way too, but uh, I'm not sure, maybe I did forget something, we'll see, we'll find out, perhaps too late. I see that Gail has um, a bottle of lemon basil dish soap that she's planning to draw. That's an excellent um, variety of uh, subject matter, and uh, clean and well scented, so that should be good. Um, Janice, I hope that you uh, have something nice, it's, it's fairly early in Northern California, but I hope to use something nice to draw, and Kathy in Sarasota. Uh, Juliana also in Florida, but she is in Buffalo today, so that's nice. Sort of, I think Buffalo in May is probably quite pleasant. There are other times of the year when Buffalo is less so. Sarah in London, um, staying up late today. Well, maybe it's not that late, it's only six o'clock, what am I talking about? But it seems like... Uh, Seems like Europe is always ahead of us in New York. Um, Kimberly in on rural Ontario, so maybe you'll be drawing some some farm equipment or something. That's probably not true. Marion in the Netherlands, very nice. I'm actually going to be in the Netherlands uh, in a couple months. Um, we're going to be spending potentially a whole month in Amsterdam something to look forward to. Michael in New York, in Brooklyn actually, I think Michael is, and it's great to see him. Kathy, also in England. Um, we're, when we go to Amsterdam, we're going to go to England for um, possibly a week. I'm going to be staying with a, uh, in the house of a friend of mine who's a really amazing illustrator, Lucille Rogers, and uh, I'm very excited about that. Tasha in Florence. You know, I would love to be in Florence at any time of the year. And my wife, who has never been to Italy, um, I'd like to take her there. I've spent some time in Florence, but it was a long time ago, and I'd love to go back. Uh, Angela in Pennsylvania. Um, and Jacinta, who was in Moldova, but now is on a train to Bucharest. That is exciting. Um, Judy in the Yukon. Again, exotic. Helen. Now, Helen... Helen and I have a surprise for you all, if you, but we, we don't want to give it away. But if you tune in next week, Helen and I will reveal a big surprise to you that I think will be pretty excited. Gail in Worcester, where they're filming a movie. Interesting. A movie in Worcester. One wonders what that might be. It's not known as sort of the Hollywood of the Northeast. Um, Kate in Baltimore. Kate, you know, Baltimore, which was supposed to be home with SketchCon, 2019, but let's not talk about that. Maybe it'll be the home of Sketch Hunt 2020. Um, Russell in Macclesfield. Russell, that's that's disappointing news. I hope that you're okay. You're using exclamation points, so that suggests that, that maybe you're okay. I hope you are, despite your bad news. Hmm. Um, Roseanne in Maine. And speaking of Hollywood, Carla is in Hollywood, Florida. Very exciting. So, all right, guys, I'm, I'm going to say hello to the rest of you soon. But in the meantime, let's talk about what we're going to do today. So, um, hopefully you have an object. I have an object here. 
This is my object. A can of Heinz beans um, with pork sausages. It's a small can, a kind of mini size, uh, 200 grams, so it's sort of a snack size can of beans. But that's what I'm going to be drawing today. I'm going to work on this. There's a lot of interesting things about this can of beans to me. Um, so that's what I'm going to draw. But hopefully you have some object. I'll share my can of beans with you because that's the kind of guy I am. I'll share them with you. But um, you know, it will be it will be up. I think it would be even better if you had some object of your own. It could be it could be some um, lemon basil washing up liquid. It could be a tube of toothpaste. It could be something that's in your purse, something that's in your pocket. Doesn't really matter. Just something that we can spend, you know, maybe half an hour looking at, drawing, thinking about, talking about uh, together. So, um, so let's get on that. Um, Murderfly says that the uh, volume sees a bit blown out. Is that is that possibly true? Is anybody else having that feeling? Let me know because uh, I can adjust it somewhat here. I can just and I can adjust it back up to here, but this is generally the the volume that I use. So let me know if it does sound terrible, and I'll and I'll try and fix it. Um, okay, good. Well, thank you, Brian, for for bringing that up. And uh, Suzanne, great. Johnny Zapeta, fantastic. Um, Alice, Michelle, Joanna, Spirit Wolf, Juliana, Christine. Kimberly. Great. Well, let's get on it, shall we? Let me um, move over to the other perspective here. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to be drawing um, on the iPad today. hope that's okay with you. Um, all right. My iPad is freshly charged. And let me just double check that my thingamabob is working. It is. Good. Yeah, I wanted to work on the iPad because I I like working on the iPad, you know. Um, I've drawn cans of beans and watercolored them before, but let's see what it's like on the iPad. So, all right, are you guys ready to start? Ready to start uh, enjoying ourselves with uh, some beans or whatever else? So here's here's a picture of, um, as you can see, right there on the screen. That's my, that's my can of beans. Here's my iPad, and there am I. I will be giving you running commentary as we proceed. All right. I don't know. I don't, we'll see how much I talk about this. You know, I mean, I might talk about beans, but I, I don't know if I feel necessarily like talking intensely about what I'm drawing. Um, we'll see. Maybe I will. I'm trying to avoid um, going too crazy with these various digital tools that you get with the iPad. Um, I've been thinking about the iPad quite a lot recently because I'm working on this course which is um, about how to draw on the iPad or how to keep a sketchbook on the iPad let's say and uh, it just made me think not just about the techniques but really about the the whole sort of experience and and philosophy, I would say, um, of making digital art and what that's really like and whether that's a good substitute for the sorts of things that one gets out of drawing on paper. I was just working on that this morning, thinking about that. You know, what, is this a good thing? Is it a good thing to, to be digital? What do you guys think? I think we have different impressions depending on whether we've done it or not. I think there's some people who feel like inherently it's got to be a bad thing, you know. But um, I don't, I don't ever feel that way. I mean, I, I, I love technology. I love gizmos and doodads, and um, but it depends on what really what you're using them for. They're not always necessarily uh, a substitute for the analog. They don't necessarily give you the same sorts of um, experiences. I don't know, that's just my feeling. 
something calm and meditative that I get out of drawing, and I, that I still find I'm able to, to get out of this experience of drawing on my iPad. I haven't lost that at all. I mean, I was sitting here last night, in fact, drawing on my iPad until really late. I was listening to, um, do you know what Riot Girl is? Riot Girl is like a form of sort of punk rock, I guess. And uh, for some reason, I was listening to a bunch of that sitting here in the semi-dark while my wife was out and drawing on the iPad. And it was, I don't know, it was just like the same kind of experience that, that I love to have if I was just sitting here with a pen and paper. So, it worked. Yeah, this is horrible. This is horrible. This is all terrible. I'm going to start again. In fact, I'm going to start again. And I can. It's more like it. This doesn't happen with my sketchbook, that it crashes. That never happens. Yeah, so this is one of the things that, that occurs not, not very often, but it does happen sometimes, where suddenly it gives up the ghost. Um, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I was born in England. And in England we have a pretty different relationship with beans than we do in the United States. In the United States, beans, I think, are generally, you know, they're sort of a barbecue item, right? They're a summer thing. Throw on the barbecue. I mean, you don't throw them on the barbecue, but you have them with hamburgers and stuff like that. And there's not like an enormous kind of variety of ways that Americans eat baked beans. It's not, it's not a staple. I think that there are a lot of things that we um, would substitute for that. I mean, you might put, you might put beans on a hot dog, right? Um, but you don't really, they're not sort of part of our culture here in America the way, the way they are in England. I mean, in England, particularly beans on toast is, it's just a staple. You know, it's something that, that that you start having when you're a kid, and uh, it's just a, a way of life, the bean way of life, bean living. Um, yes, I think even like the fact that this can of beans that they spell beans with a z, with a z or or a z um, is really you know, an indication of the affection that, pe that English people have for beans, which, uh, again, we don't really have here. You know, they're fine, but it's not like there's something that we would give nicknames to. Um, so, and I remember that as a kid having big beans, beans on toast for dinner, and, um, you know, it was just a staple thing. So, let's see, has anybody complained about the sound? Yes, all right. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I remember as a kid, like as a kid, making beans on toast, that's something that you can do. Like you can, you can cook your own 
you know, picky if you have a microwave, which, of course, we didn't back in medieval times when I was a kid, but, you know, certainly um, we, you could theoretically open a can of beans and you could uh, warm them up on the, on the stove top and then you could make, a, make toast. I mean, who can't make toast? So, so it's it's another reason why I think it's so such a staple. Some of you guys are are English, and you'll hopefully know what I'm talking about. But maybe that's not the case anymore. Maybe that's sort of a maybe that's all out of fashion now, as so many things are in England. I feel bad about England sometimes, yeah. I'm planning to go there this summer, and I have family that lives there. My one of my, well, actually, two of my sisters live there, and my father and my stepmother live there. Um, so, yeah, so England is still kind of part of my life, but you know, I just became an American citizen not too long ago, which is kind of a big deal because I gave up my, well, I'm supposed to have given up my English passport. I didn't actually give it up, but who knows, I might have to one day. Um, yeah, but beans on toast is, it's a really good and easy thing to make when you're a student, um, when you're, when you're lazy, it's just, easy food stuff to make, right? <laughs> All right, there we go. That's more or less it. Let's see where we go next. Signs. And here's a tricky thing. Watch this. Um, well, what I can do, if I was really clever, which I'm, I'm not as prepared for this as I should be, but if I was really clever, I could, I could reproduce this circle because, of course, this circle and that circle are the same. You know, it's easy to forget that sometimes when you're drawing something, you can go, oh. It's sitting flat on the table, so therefore it must be, it must be flat. But it's not. It's it's as round as the top. So, oops. No, still not getting it. This is one of the annoying things that can happen when you're drawing on the iPad. Is you see, you left that little hole out. And uh, here we go back. So, all right, um, let me just draw the bottom of this can. Sorry if I'm not really giving you a full course on using the iPad now. That's what I'm working on. That's, once I've figured out how to do that, I will do it. I will promise you I will teach you what I've learned over the last couple of years of doing this, and um, maybe it'll help you.
it would be nice to be able to play music while we're doing this, wouldn't it? You know what happens when you do, unless you play stock music, is uh, then YouTube comes along and complains and they take down your video. So that is the problem that I'm encountering. So I'm just going to have to kind of th think musical thoughts. So are you. And uh, I don't have this color quite right, so let me adjust it. Is it? Is this, okay, so we've been doing this for about 15 minutes. This is the type of drawing that you really you could spend many hours doing. And unfortunately, we don't have that much time today. Yeah, I'm also um, torn because on the one hand, I'm trying to do something sort of realistic, sort of observationally correct. Let's put it that way instead of realistic. And uh, but some of the problems with digital art is if you spend, if you become too persnickety about it, it can be really lifeless, or it can just seem, you know, like like computer generated or um, I don't know just artificial and I think the other problem is I'm not really careful enough to do this kind of thing terribly well I think there are people out there who could do it and it would look like a photograph photograph of a can of beans. Um, no, not me. I pride myself on my sloppiness. Yeah, so what I was saying about um, the artificiality, there's a term in uh, the world of computer-generated animation, also in robotics, and that term is the uncanny valley. Uncanny valley means that you make something digitally and it looks almost real, but just slightly off, you know, and that the human brain is super aware of that disparity, that distinction. We're super aware of the fact that something is, isn't real, but is kind of pretending to be real, is deceiving us in some way. So if you make a robot or a cartoon character that is cute, abstract, you know, I mean, take Mickey Mouse, for instance. If Mickey Mouse was an actual mouse, that would be kind of repulsive. You know, like there was that movie made of Stuart Little where he was almost looked like a real mouse. It was sort of disturbing. I mean real mice are not that cute compared to compared to cartoon mice. So um, you know and it's particularly you're particularly aware of it when it comes to humans.
depictions of humanity. You know that uh, you, you just you just know that's not really a person. And um, I think particularly in these days we're really paranoid about photoshopping of reality, you know, and whether or not that's trying to deceive us. Um, something you have to think about when you make digital art. What are you? Are you trying to make a photograph, or in which case, why? Or are you trying to? You know, I mean, because these tools, you could, I mean, in more capable hands than mine, you could totally make something that looked like a photograph. You could spend huge amounts of time on it. And I guess that would make sense if you were, you know, I don't know, working in packaging or something, if you're working in advertising, but just as an artist, why bother? So, instead you want to do something that feels like your own subjective point of view. At least that's what I tell myself, to excuse the disparity between what I'm making and the reality that I'm attempting to depict. You know who just said all that? The monkey in my head. Obviously, right? Making up excuses. In case you were judging me. This guy can't draw, what are you talking about? We do that to ourselves a lot. That's the kind of cheating you get to do on the iPad. See, I just made room for the beans down here. Yep, pretty damn clever. See, normally I would have had to fudge that and say, oh well, can't fit the beans in. Uh, you don't really need the beans, but of course you need the beans. Wouldn't be right without these beans down here. What would a can of beans be without beans? Thursday again, sometimes known as Mini Friday, by those people who love the weekend. So it's almost the weekend. Here in the United States, it is almost Memorial Day weekend, when we uh, will remember, well, what will we remember? We're supposed to remember the fallen dead, I think, or, yeah, we're supposed to remember the people who gave their lives in war. I think we'll probably more remember that there's a sale on some item that we want. That's or, or we'll remember to go to a barbecue, right? It's the first weekend of summer, so that's what it's all about. And maybe if you do, you'll have beans. Hey, suddenly, suddenly, this is all coming together. This drawing the time. It's a very contemporary piece of art that I'm making here. 
very contemporary. It's perfect for barbecue season. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to celebrate this event. I think probably um, go to. I'm going to go to. Um, we have a thing here in New York called Governor's Island. It's an island that. Um, that is just off the coast, the southern coast of Manhattan. It's about a 10 minute boat ride from, from Manhattan. And for a long time, Governor's Island, it's kind of place that, as a New Yorker, you never really got to go because um, it was, it belonged to the Coast Guard. Well, yeah, I, I don't think that, I'm not sure when the governor actually lived there. The governor lives in Albany in upstate New York, but um, it's been, always been called Governor's Island. But anyway, um, the Coast Guard used to have their main, I don't know what it was exactly, that they the Coast Guard had some kind of training facility there. And so New Yorkers just sort of knew that it was out there, this island, but there was nothing that we could do about it because you couldn't go there. And then, a few years ago, the Coast Guard left, and the federal government decided to donate this island to New York, to New York City, and became a thing for people to go to. And so we used to go there initially. We would go there, and it was it was still old barracks and kind of run down buildings and stuff and then over time they've developed it more and more and it's become this kind of cool place to go on of a weekend you can only get there by boat by ferry and uh, as I said it's it's a I think a free ferry ride from lower Manhattan And when we first used to go there, there was, um, you'd never see, you wouldn't see many people, very, very few people went there during the first summer that it was open, but then over time it became quite the place to go, and uh, as a result, it became more and more crowded, and slightly less pleasant, and slightly less of an adventure, um, but there have been an awful lot of really cool art installations there, and uh, it's, just, it's just sort of a neat place. So. They only open it. I think I think it's open now, but they only open it during the summer. So it's it's something that we might do this weekend. Anyway. I'm not going to bother this. This kind of squiggly line treatment, in lieu of actually writing stuff out, is something left over from my advertising days. Um, in the ad world, we we called it greeking. Greeking meant you indicated where type would go, but you didn't actually write what it said. It wasn't actually real type. It was just indication. And uh, so that's sort of become, I'm not sure where Greek came, because they would often replace the actual type with this kind of gobbledygook that was um, lorem ipsum, I forget what else it was, but there's, there's a special kind of words, basically, that would come up that would be typeset to indicate where the copy was going to go. And um, it was lorem ipsum, but lorem ipsum is, of course, not Greek. It's Latin. So I'm not sure what, where the term Greek came from. But anyway, there it is. So
right, so Decoration Day, Obo Girl points out. Yes, it was Decoration Day because they were because th this is interesting. Um, it was Decoration Day because the graves of both Union and Confederate soldiers who were buried at Arlington National Cemetery are decorated with flowers. That's interesting to know. Very good. Um, so yes, anyway. Yes, I am using Procreate. Thanks for asking. And let's move on. So all right, so this is this is looking very cartoony and flat, right? Obviously. So next, I want to just add a little bit of tone to it. Um, I think I'm going to combine some of these layers into a group, and then I'm going to add another layer here. And I'm going to take the airbrush, and I'm going to, whoops, too big. on top of that I think because there is that little just a little bit oops shoot um, about right. Okay, now let's try and make this can look a little bit more rounded, a bit more three-dimensional. Sometimes I don't know how, what I'm doing, which is what happened here. Oh. All right, I th think I know what I'm doing. Those of you who understand Procreate are probably gasping with horror at what I'm doing, but so it is, so be it. Um, because I just felt the first pangs of lunch hunger appear in my solar plexus. So, 
part of me is saying, all right, enough with enough with the drawing. Let's get on with it and let's eat some beans. So I might need to start winding this up soon. But uh, the final step is going to be, you know, I'm just going to do this like this. Two more things to make this a bit less, a bit less um, wooden looking. So I think I will make it. Yeesh. Yorks. Yorks. Right, let's try that for now. Um, and then. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, one final thing I'm going to do is put a bit of vignette on it. sure about that background color. What do you guys think? Alright, let's call it that. Alright, there you go. Can of beans. Oof. That was exhausting. <laughs> okay. Um, so, thanks for putting up with that. Um, that, was, that was fun. I hope that you guys got some drawing in first. I'm going to see if I'm if I've missed huge amounts of great conversation that you guys were having while I was doing this. Um, let me just see. A lot, of, a lot of bean lovers. The more you eat, the more you toot. It's true. See, but baked beans, I don't know, maybe they're the same, probably. They have that same effect. Um, all right, well, do you have any final thoughts? See, I, I love these kinds of comments. Like it better when you draw with a pen and pencil. <sighs> I don't know what to say about that. Today I drew with an iPad. You know, sometimes you draw with a pen and pencil. I've done that. Today I drew with an iPad. Um, so. Maybe next time I will, I will draw. Yes. So Melissa says that this is enlightening. 
I'm not sure in what way it was enlightening. Um, was it sort of like, oh God, that's the last thing I need to do? Or was it, yes, that was that was amazing and brilliant. And I'm glad that he did it. I don't know. Um, so what are we drawing next week? Um, let's see. Ogre Girl, you are right. Well, I'm glad that you like it. Anyway, so um, what are we drawing next week? That's a good question. I have an idea. I think we're going to draw people again. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw, we're going to talk about different ways of approaching drawing a portrait, uh, different kinds of sequences of where you start and where you end. Um, so I think that's kind of the thought. So we'll see. So I would say next week um, you could bring a picture of a person, but I'll supply some. I'll supply some pictures of people for us to draw. It's nice when we all kind of draw the same thing. It's not my favorite when we all draw people, but... I draw photos, but what else are we going to do, you know, um, when we're when we're doing that? So, anyway, um, here's what I, w I would like to suggest to you. I hope that you take away just two things from this today. One is that you can draw anything. In case you don't feel that way, that you can draw any object, um, even a can of beans. Anything is fodder for your art. It doesn't have to be you know, um, a beautiful nude, or Jesus on the cross, or a wonderful bowl of fruit. It can be a can of beans. It can be anything. Um, so that's one thing that I hope you take away. And the other thing I hope you take away is that um, try new things. You know, I'm messing around with this iPad. It's a struggle, you know. Some people don't like it. Um, what I like about it is that it's a struggle. You know, I find that um, it's important not to get like so good at something that you kind of, hey, I, I've mastered that. I think mastery is is tedious and deadening and dull. That that when you are a master of something, you no longer are exploring, taking risks, adventuring. So, you know, being a beginner is an amazing place to be, and it's great to be on that journey. It's really frustrating and you feel like uh, an idiot and an incompetent. Um, but it's also amazing because there's so far for you to go. The, the movie's just begun, right? The journey has just started. There's lots of places to go. And that's the kind of way I feel about the iPad, even though it's been a couple of years. And I am at the point where I feel like I can share some stuff with you. Um, but, you know, there's still an awful lot for me to learn about this. this and I, I also, know, I'm not saying that I know everything there is to do about learn about uh, drawing with pen and ink or watercolors. Far from that. I just started to get a little mm, less interested in the process. You know, I think it's, it's there's still an awful lot to, to experiment with and talk about. So, um, so I like what Alice is saying here. If you're not scared, you're not learning. I think that's true. I think the scary part about, about the, is the newness, you know. I was reading, one of my favorite books is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I read it, you know, almost every year since I was a little kid. And I was reading um, a biography of Kenneth Graham. And there was one section where they were talking about the inherent conservatism of small children. I thought that was interesting because you think of children as being sort of bold and kind of, you know, not caring and going forward. But it's also true that they um, they like regularity, predictability. That's why little kids love for you to read the same story to them over and over and over again. They'll watch the same videos over and over and over again. You know, there's something comforting about knowing how it's going to turn out. But you're also stuck in a loop then, you know. You're not, you're not progressing. So even though it's scary, I think having the guts, the nerve to say, I'm going to persevere. Because honestly, in the end, what are the consequences of trying a new art medium? The worst thing you're going to do is waste some paper. And there, trees are growing all over the world making new stuff. So, don't worry about that. Um, speaking of pastels, you know, maybe I don't know. I don't know much about pastels. There's not a lot of pastel art that I've personally responded to. Renoir, maybe, but you know. And the thing about pastels is they're hell in a sketchbook. I don't know. At least from my experience, they're always messy. Um, so, but that's just me. If you know more, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more about it. Write to me and tell me what you think. Okay, guys. 
Thanks for drawing with me today. If you have done any drawings during this period that you would like to share of my can of beans or of whatever you drew, and you want to put it on Facebook or Instagram and put the marker hashtag uh, draw with me, draw with me, one word, that would be great. If you're a member of the Sketchbook School student community, uh, that means you're probably either in the schoolyard or going to join it soon. The schoolyard is our social network just for people who go to sketchbook school. Anybody can join it. You just have to sign up for a class. Um, and you can take a class with me called How to Draw Without Talent that is like under $30 and we'll teach you an awful lot, but we'll get you into the schoolyard. Anyway, if you're in the schoolyard, share it there. There's a whole category called Draw With Me and you can put your stuff up there. So lots of stuff. Uh, I'd love to see what you're doing. Okay. Um, look at this. Juliana says, a couple of my passengers yesterday on my flight were artists, so I shared my sketchbooks with them, and I got such wonderful feedback and encouragement. That's great. I mean, people love to see other people's sketchbooks. You know, I think we're hesitant at first to show people sketchbooks. Like, what if they think they're terrible? And I can tell you, universally, people say, I wish I was doing that too. I wish I could do that too. You know, so... Um, I'm off to eat my beans, got some toast in the toaster, and uh, I'll see you again next week. And those of you, by the way, who are in That Looks Really Real, which is the course that we're in the middle of doing right now, I'll see you tomorrow on the webinar at noon, where if you have any specific questions to ask me about anything, you can do it there. So I'll see you then. Thanks again for joining me, and this was really fun. See you later.